As I'm sure most of you are aware, these past few weeks have been very hectic in terms of video games, news and announcements. Now, I am here to attempt to run through the highlights and the peaks of these past few weeks. Now, whether you want a gentle reminder of what's to come or you were in a coma and completely missed it all, I'm here to give you a full breakdown. Now, just to confirm a couple things, I ain't going to be going over every detail about every game, but I will try to include the majority and the important ones. I'll include dates and times if I can be bothered and any other information but also I'll throw in a little bit of personal opinion just to spice shit up now remember if I missed a game that you love and is your particular favourite I want you to know I did it on purpose it was personal and deliberately aimed at you just to pee you off so please rage at me in the comments and tell me how much you want me to die Cyberpunk Phantom Liberties, now this sounds pretty cool, apparently he's say V, or who knows, I thought he died in the main game, so it's going to be interesting to see how your ending affects the beginning of this, if that's when it takes place, apparently it improves the main game as well, and it makes you wonder even more why they released it so undercooked and looking like pants. Now Fable, the new Fable, has a giant guy in it for some reason at the very start, which I'm sure has no correlation to the main story, looks cool. Like it's been cooking for a million years, so hopefully they've put the right time and effort to make it look good. No release date yet, because they couldn't be asked committing, but it looks cool. Will it, we get the same enjoyment we did out of the first one? Who cares? Not me, because I don't have an Xbox. Avowed. Avowed? 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 Anyway, it looks really cool. It looks very undercut, though. I mean, it doesn't look like it's a next-gen console game, but then again... Not many of them did. However, Fallout New Vegas still keeps me up at night, so I hope for the best. It's coming one day out of the 365 in 2024. Xbox are bringing out a one terabyte console that should have been released when they first announced it all them years ago. Ah yes, a Prince of Persia game. Everyone was on their knees begging for this. January 18th for the two of you interested. I'm over 2D games, so this won't be for me. But any meatheads or toddlers out there should be getting pumped. Now something that is getting me pumped, Mortal Kombat 2. A new Mortal Kombat, a new story. Story, maybe new characters probably new locations definitely a buddy system you can select different characters to jump in and cause even more chaos overall and very cool coming september i'm pretty sure anyway path of exile 2 no idea what this is a few VAR games, Crossfire Sierra Squad looks cool for the 10 people who actually own a VR, also Resident Evil 4 in VR, which would be insane. But I ain't buying one because I can't even afford a Starbucks on the way to work. But on the topic of VR, seriously, I do really want one. I'm just probably going to wait until things cheapen on the hardware, improve significantly where it's, you know, almost irresistible. A new 2D Sonic. Now, forgive me if I insult you, but these are not fun to play. Were they ever? I don't know. I was never into them, but I suppose they made a film, so they're going to profit on it, so there's another one of them. Now, Liza P, probably the most interesting looking thing to come out of it. It's probably the coolest looking thing I've seen in a while, but unfortunately, I'm so terrible at Souls and Elden Ring. I don't even get the past like the first couple bosses because my concentration is that of a dog. Instead, I'll be a big boy and watch PewDiePie play it. Which he better goddamn do. Sandlands is about this dude. What the hell is he? Alan Wake 2. Now this looks really interesting. I played the first one, I'll be honest. I didn't think it was amazing. I never finished it. Maybe because it came out a while ago and I'm a child. But look, it looks like The Last of Us, Resident Evil, you know, horror survival, resource management. I'm very excited for it. I'll definitely be playing this. I will wait for Jake Baldino or maybe a Angry Joe to tell me if it's worth me to play in my wallet. Warhammer, which is for nerds. Meaning it's already in my Amazon basket. John Carpenter, now he's someone who's doing something. I don't know who he is. Just Googled him and apparently he's an American filmmaker, but he looks very old. So I think he might have got a slightly senile and forgotten what his job is and just created a 30 hour film, which, chokes aside, looks sick. Now onto a big boy, Spider Man 2. Well, Spider Man PS4 2, Spider Man PS5 1, I'm not sure what the title is, but it's got Venom, it's got Lizard, it's got Craven, and boy, I'm very excited for this bad boy. First one was class, except it got slightly repetitive with the combat, so if they could spice things up there and make another insane story that made me cry at the end, which I do not cry, I'm a heartless bastard, and it did it. But if they can make a great story with interesting characters like Mary Jane, Black Cat's Big Buddha, I will be there opening day in my Spider-Man pyjamas from a kid. That's still fit me. Now, if you just saw that, I'm sure you're wondering why the hell... 
is this guy riding a giant Pikachu shooting at Pokemon. Yeah, I have no idea. This is basically Pokemon with guns. I mean, I have no idea what I just watched. They, they surely can't can't do that. Now, with the recent success of Gollum, they've decided to bring out a new Lord of the Rings game about another favourite character, the dwarfs. Now, they've already used the coolest, so they thought, let's use the second coolest. They're the ones who are tiny, you can barely jump and need help getting on their horses. Who the hell green lights these games? I reckon my nan would have a better job, and I don't think she's ever seen Lord of the Rings. Five idiots keep paying their entire yearly wages. Five idiots keep spending their entire yearly wages on operators for Warzone, so they're bringing out a season four. You know who you are. Please just stop for the rest of us. We want zombies, and we want good zombies. Not whatever that Vanguard rubbish that was served up to us on a silver platter. Good lord. Stellaris. Nah. I mean, Star Trek, I mean, who, who the fuck even watches Star Trek? Never mind, wanted a game. So some weird-ass Final Fantasy shit, and of course, it's already in the basket, baby. I know nothing about it, but it's not going to stop me playing it, because everyone and their cat is telling me to get it. Starfield. Now, I'll be honest, I lost all interest in this game, but not anymore. Holy fuck nuts. This shit looks insane. A fully new character customization. Hundreds of ships to customize and you can own multiple at a time and be like some crazy hoarder Hundreds of weapons and customizations for all types of different weaponry from swords to fist shit to gun shit to whatever shit you find Thousand planets now. I'll be perfectly honest. This shit kind of worries me I hope they don't just make like a hundred million planets that you can go to that are just empty and desolate for you to just mine pointless ore so you can build pointless bases because I'll be honest, I'm more autistic than artistic, and making things like bases to do more shit is just never what I'm really playing a game for. I delve the tip of my toe into it, but I'm not going balls deep. There's different factions, do you want to be a criminal, take over someone's ship and steal everything for yourself, like their sweet rolls, well go ahead, there's weird aliens, creatures. This is probably my most excited game now after seeing a good 30 minute presentation, I just really hope they can deliver it better than, than a bloody delivery driver. And if you've not had enough bloody treats today, a new Star Wars game called Outlaws. Let's hope they don't do a classic bloody Ubisoft and fall flat on their face. New Forza game, which I'll be honest, nah. Clockwork Revolution looks like a game about clocks and a revolution and they didn't give us a date because they couldn't be asked, which I appreciate because then I can forget about it until it comes out. Payday 3, now this is only like 35 quid, so if I manage to make some friends by September 21st, then I'll be sure to get it. Fallout 76 DLC, somehow some idiots keep playing this. I mean, who, who the fuck plays this? Again, more Bethesda nonsense, Elder Scrolls Online crap, like, come on, come on. And now on to Big Boss, man, Metal Gear Solid Remake. Personally, I've never played the originals, but I love Phantom Pain. If they make them as good as I hear they were... I mean, just imagine if it's as good as Resident Evil 4. Holy shit. Take my money now and call me Jeff. I mean, just look at how cool this trailer is. Assassin's Creed about a mirage again. Why so many, but also, like, I kind of want to get it. I don't know what's wrong with me. Phantom Blade Zero. Again, looks cool as shit, but I have zero skills in video games. I play Minecraft and FIFA on easy mode, so this is just not going to be played. Now, Five Nights at Freddy's, which is obviously a tie-in game to the new Five Nights at Freddy's film, which stars the guy in all the rubbish films we saw as a kid, but he's also in Hunger Games. So well done, the guy's moving up in the world. Congrats, dude. Now, my personal favourite. Cat Quest. Pirates of the Caribbean. Now who are we kidding, this is what we came here for. Now, there are many games which you have mentioned, some look amazing, some look alright, and some make you wonder the people who make video games have ever played anything other than Clash of Clans. So now that we've seen them all, what was your favourite? What was your least favourite and what are you excited for? Let me know down below. You let me know and I'll see you below where we can carry on the conversation. Godspeed bitches.